Good day students, welcome to mathcutserve.com. In this clip we're going to be going over how to analyze polynomial functions. Don't forget to visit our website at mathcutserve.com for access to a wide variety of math tutorials ranging from algebra all the way to calculus. Alright, so in um, this example that we're going to be doing, um, we have to find the following. It says for each polynomial function, state the degree find the zeros and multiplicity of each zero, state the number of times the graph touches and crosses the x-axis, state the maximum number of turns, find the y-intercept, and sketch a possible graph. All right, let's start uh, with problem number one. So for, for the pro first problem, we have the function y equals x minus 1, the quantity x minus 1, times the quantity x minus 3 raised to the second power. All right, so let's see here. Um, let's start with 1, the degree, um, degree of y. What's the degree of y here? Um, what you do is you take a look at, in this is the factor form of this polynomial function. So the degree of this term here is this quantity is 1 and the degree of this quantity is 2. So if you think about it, when you expand this completely, the degree will still be 1. If you expand this completely, the degree will be 2. So using the um, product property of exponents, what do you think the resulting degree is going to be? It's going to be this degree here plus that degree there. So the degree will be 3. Okay. All right, uh, so in factored form, just sum the degrees of the factored components, and then um, you should be fine. Well, and also you have to note that in here, this is x to the first power, this is x to the first power too. So let me show you the steps. If you want to, if you want to do it the long way, you can expand it completely. But a shortcut is you take the leading coefficient from each quantity, and then I'm going to have x to the first power raised to the first power times x to the first power raised to the second power. All right, and then when you expand this, you have x times x to the second power. Using the um, power of a power property, you simply multiply the powers. Now here, you're going to use um, the product of powers. That just involves you adding the exponent. Anytime you multiply exponents with the same base, you add the powers, right? So 1 plus 2, so the degree is 3. That's why we have 3 as the degree. Number 2, we have to find the zeros. So to find the zeros, you take each uh, quantity, set it equal to 0, and solve. Okay, x minus 2 and x minus 3 quantity square equals 0. Now any of the factors that's a square, that means that the most that well that has a power r um, the power basically tells you the multiplicity of that zero so the x minus one quantity has a power of one so the multiplicity here will be one um, so we're going to have if you solve this you have x equals uh, you add one to both sides x equals one so that's the first zero and the multiplicity will be zero here because will be one here because the power is one. Here to solve this, how do we solve this? Um, we can root both sides, right? And if you take the square root of a square, those two cancel out. We have x minus three equals zero. Add three to both sides, and you have x equals three. Okay, so there are your zeros. Let's go ahead and write it down. So your zeros. <coughs> R, x equals 1 with a multiplicity multiplicity of what? 1. Why is the multiplicity of this 0 1? Because notice we talked about the power here. That tells you the multiplicity of the 0 that you get when you solve um, the quantity when you set it equal to 0. And then the second 0 we had was from this piece x minus 3 to the second power. When we set that to 0 and solved it, we got 3. Now, what's the multiplicity here? 
the most simplicity here is the power of that quantity before you solved it, right? So it's 2, so you have that. This basically tells you that you have a double root at x equals 3. The graph will touch x equals 3, and then it does not cross. It, it goes back in the direction that it came from. If it's coming from above, it touches 3 and goes back up. If it's coming from below, it touches 3 and goes back down. So this right here can be considered as a double root. Okay, number 3 says number of times the graph touches and crosses the x-axis. Now, the multiplicity tells us um, the answer uh, to that. Where you have a multiplicity of 2, it cross, it touches. If you have a multiplicity of one, it crosses. Okay, so um, in this, in this, for number, uh, for part number three, the graph crosses um, the x-axis. Now, how many roots have a multiplicity of one? We have exactly one. So it crosses the x-axis once. Okay? Uh, and then the graph touches the x-axis. Now, the graph touches the x-axis at zeros where you have a multiplicity of two. Okay? So if you notice here, the multiplicity here is two. So um, the graph touches the x-axis um, how many times do we have a multiplicity of 2? We have a multiplicity of 2 exactly once. So it touches the x-axis once. Okay, so be careful. We're not going by the multiplicity. We're going by the number of zeros that has a multiplicity of 2. So how many zeros have that multiplicity? Exactly one zero, which is 3. And that is the point where the graph touches the x-axis. Okay, and then how many times do we have a multiplicity of one? Uh, we have it exactly once here, so that's where um, we have the graph crossing the x-axis exactly once in that um, situation. All right, so some of you might wonder, what if we have higher um, multiplicities? Like, what if we have four, five, six, seven? How do we know? Well, in that case. Um, whenever you have an odd multiplicity, the graph crosses, okay? And if you have an even multiplicity, the graph touches. So in this case, you see the multiplicity here is 2, which is an even number. So that tells you it touches at that 0. And then for x equals 1, um, that's an odd number, so it crosses at that 0. Okay, so for higher numbers, you just use odd or even, even for smaller numbers. So that's another way to think about it, all right? So the rule of thumb is odd crosses, odd multiplicity, okay? And even touches. That's looking at the multiplicity of the zeros. All right, let's take a look at question number four. Maximum number of turns. Maximum number of turns is less is one less than the degree. Okay, so let's write that down. Maximum number of turns is equal to degree minus one. Okay, so what's the degree of this polynomial? The degree of this polynomial we determined it earlier in part one as three. So we just simply subtract one from three, and our answer is two. So that's the maximum number of turns that this graph can have. All right, so for step number five, this is where to find the y-intercept. Uh, okay, so to find the y-intercept, <coughs> y-intercept, we're just basically going to solve um, the equation for y uh, when x is equal to zero, okay? All right, so remember what intercept means. Uh, when the graph intercepts the y-axis, that means that 
um, x is equal to 0. All right, so the, for this one, we're just going to set x equal to 0 and solve. Okay, and solve for y. That's how you find your y-intercept. If you want to find your x-intercepts, which are the zeros, remember what we did over here? You set the entire function equal to 0 to get your um, y, to get your x-intercepts. So when you're setting the entire function to zero, what you're doing is setting y to zero. For y-intercept, you set your x to zero, okay? So we have the function y equals x minus one times x minus three squared. So what do we set to zero to find a y-intercept here? To find a y-intercept, hint, we're looking for the y, that means x has to go, x has to go to zero. Okay, so your y-intercept, changing this to y-intercept means x becomes 0. Okay, don't forget that. 0, 0, square. Now we'll solve this, we'll get our y-intercept. So our y-intercept is going to be negative 1 times negative 3 square. Okay, what is negative 3 square? Well, in order of operations, we have to do that exponent first before we multiply. Minus times the minus is a plus, so we have positive 9. So our y-intercept is negative 9. Okay? So don't forget, y-intercept set x to 0, x-intercept set y to 0. Okay, number 6, we're just going to sketch a possible graph. It's not going to be perfect. Uh, taking advantage of the fact that we know what the intercepts, roots, turns, and multiplicities of our graphs um, are including the zeros too. We don't want to forget that. Okay, so let's go ahead and try that. Um, we know that the y-intercept is negative 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Negative 9. And then we also know that um, we have zeros at 1 and 3. What does that mean? That we have zeros at 1 and 3? It means that um, when y is 0, those are the x values. Okay, so let's call this 1, 2, 3. So we have a 0 right here. And we have another 0 right here. And we have a 0 right here also. Remember, <clears throat> this is just a sketch and not perfect. Okay, now we know that the graph crosses 1 and touches 3. Okay. And then we know it goes through this y-intercept. So the graph is going to look something like this. And then it goes, crosses there, turns. All right, that's the first turn. We can only have one more turn. Remember the maximum number of turns permissible here is exactly two. Okay, or exactly two. So come down, touch, and go up, down, like that. And then this comes down. All right, so this is a possible graph um, for uh, the situation that we have earlier. Okay, so that's that. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Really appreciate it. Feel free to subscribe to our channel for updates to other tutorials such as this. More clips can be found on markletserve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.